Batman's best friend, right? But even the most trusting of companions need you to put in effort towards the relationship before they can be able to trust you completely. Does your dog make eye contact with you? Does it leave the room when you come in? Does it chew everything you own while you're away? Yes, yes, and another yes? We have a problem. Today, we're looking at 10 signs your dog doesn't trust you and dissecting the cause of each of them. Number 10. Intimidation if your dog leaves the room the second you walk in, is constantly watching your every move, and stiffens its body any time you try to pet it, it's probably afraid of you, and ergo not trusting of you. Why is this so? Experts believe that the prime reason why a dog seems to be disturbing of its pet parent is because the parent has been intimidating their pet. Now, even the most well-meaning of pet parents can be intimidating sometimes, often without knowing that they actually are. For example, if your pet has seen you in a bad mood one too many times and if you're prone to being destructive when angry, then your pet has internalized that image of you and is now fearful of you. There are some pet parents who would never dream of harming their pets, but have catered to an environment at home which causes their dog to be fearful of them. Number 9. Age your puppy seems to stiffen up its body anytime you try to pick it up to pet it. Why is that so? Well, puppies aren't that trusting of their pet parents and it's for a pretty simple reason. They're young. Because they're so young, they need time for you to establish a rapport with them and show them that you're indeed looking out for them. You can't expect a puppy you've just gotten to want to snuggle with you. Sometimes puppies would refuse to eat the food you put out in front of them. They'll eat food in calculated movements and will generally be staring at you a whole lot. Don't be dissuaded by their behavior. Sure, they may not trust you now, but puppies take about a month or so to trust their new pet parents, providing the parents are putting in the work. Number 8. Unreliable Routine if this was a perfect world, then there wouldn't be any 9 to 5 jobs. We could just spend every waking second playing with our pets and reminding them of just how much we adore them. But is it a perfect world? Unfortunately, no. Now, while you can't control the fact that you work, you can control your routine and how your dog perceives your routine. For example, if you work from 9 to 5, then show your dog that even if you leave in the morning, you'll always be back in the afternoon. By showing your pet that you're sticking to a routine and not abandoning them, they'll learn that you're worth trusting. Be careful though, if you slack off, then your dog might become aggressive when you either leave or come home. Number 7. Not making eye contact how would you know if you've been successful and your dog has finally started trusting you? What sign should you look out for if your dog is ready to trust you? Eye contact. Experts believe that a telltale sign of a pet that's trusting you is the amount of eye contact they're willing to make with you. If your dog makes eye contact with you often, then your efforts to cultivate a trusting environment for them are working. On the other hand, if they're still not looking at you properly, then you probably need to put in more effort or have slacked at some point. Dogs are pretty trusting of their pet parents in general, and it doesn't take them long to be able to trust you. However, if you mess up at any point, then it's back to square one. Number 6 you don't get body language. We've managed to put a man on the moon, but we still can't decipher what wolf means. What are those science guys up to? While there might be an obvious communication gap between you and your pet, it doesn't mean that there's no way for the two of you to understand one another. The only limitation is verbal communication. Other than that, dogs are constantly trying to tell you what they think and how they feel. How? With their body language. Experts have spent tireless hours to try to decipher every individual body language of pets in a bid to help you understand your pet better. Not only would this be helpful to you, it'll also allow your pet to view you as a responsible parent that understands it and caters to its needs. For example, if you're able to tell whenever your pet is hungry, you'll show it that you're aware of what you're trying to say and are willing to help them. Obviously, your pet will begin to trust you more and more. The first step comes from you. You need to educate yourself over your pet's needs and wants and find a way to communicate with them. There are certain signs that your pet picks up on you or cues that are individual to the two of you and your relationship. Number 5. Seeing you angry often there's a difference between training your pet to be obedient and scaring them into submission. One is obviously frowned upon. 
If you think that the best way to get your pet to listen to you is by scaring them into doing as you, then you really need to reevaluate your relationship with them. Maybe even the way you think. Sure, your pet will listen to you that one time you yell at it to do something, but they won't be able to trust you a whole lot after that. Differentiate between yourself and a pet owner. You're trying to go the extra mile and be a pet parent, not just an owner. You're technically the adult here and need to be able to create a safe environment for your pet, which obviously starts with you not using anger as a way to get them to do what you want. These are the little steps that alleviate a major problem. Number four, pranks you've pulled. The only time pranks are funny is when everyone's in on the joke or when both of you get it afterwards. Do you think you'd be able to tell your pet after you've pulled a prank on them that it was only a joke? There are some pet parents that go a little too far when playing with their dogs. They usually get carried away and think it'd be funny if they prank their pets, like hiding without cause, doing something for a video, or just messing with them. While it might be funny for you for the time being, it'll severely damage your relationship with your pet in the long run. Now your dog views you as someone who's unreliable. They'll be watching your every move and trying to decipher what you really mean. Are you really just going to put down its bowl and walk away? Are you going to sneak up from behind it? Your dog is trying to trust you and you need to be able to show them that you're worth being trusted. Number three, inept reward system. The best way to train any pet is to establish a reward system. This might come in the form of treats or positive reinforcement. However, if you either reward them too often or not enough, they'll start to distrust you. Is there such a thing as too many rewards? Surprisingly, yes. If your dog starts viewing you as someone who will only reward them whenever they do anything that's usually required of them. For example, if you give your dog a treat each time it stops barking, your dog will associate barking as the stimulus for the treat. Likewise, treating them every time as opposed to frequently hinders EPT training. Trying to create a reward system that's beneficial to your relationship with your dog while also being effective enough to get your pet to become more obedient. Number two, frequent punishments. If there's one thing experts have told pet parents time and time again, it's that punishing your pet every single time is not the right way to get them to behave, let alone trust you. Sometimes, even the most well-meaning of pet parents would think that punishing your pet is a way to get them to behave as part of their training. Is it really? Not exactly. While you should be stern with your dog at instances where you feel like the problem might become a more severe one as time goes by, there's also a responsibility as a pet parent that you cannot vent out your frustrations on your pet and just punish them whenever you're in a bad mood. Number one, covering or hiding. Have you cultivated a safe environment for your pet or are you lacking in doing so? You'd be able to tell for sure based on whether your dog is likely to cover or hide themselves whenever you're around. To say that a dog is one of nature's most adorable, trusting, friendly creations would be kept. However, trust isn't instilled in them from day one. They need you to help them to get to the point where they can be comfortable around you. All right, so what did you have to do to get your pet to start trusting you? Be sure to let us know in the comments section below and be sure to like this video and subscribe to Inforama for more pet related content. We'll see you in the next one.